Jai Shri Ram. Along with healthy diet and exercise, sleep is another key to health. We all understand that getting seven to eight hours of sleep each day is something that we should do as it's beneficial to our body systems to get enough rest, specifically having a strong restorative effect on the brain. However, for many, if not most of us in the modern world, this is quite challenging to do due to the responsibilities of work or school, as well as the inordinate amount of screen time that has become a normal part of our lives nowadays. Another hurdle to overcome is this idea that people have that as long as they feel fine, meaning they feel like they have enough energy, they're not losing out on mental functioning and so on, that it's okay to have uh, less sleep than that or even just a few hours of sleep a day. This video is not going to be directed towards those people since they're not trying to actually sleep more each night because they feel like it's not necessary. But instead, I'll be directing this video towards people who do know that they're not getting enough sleep and want to actually change it. I was in this situation uh, in the past before I utilized the strategies that I'm about to share with you now that I have used to take care of this issue for me and hopefully they'll work for you as well. So my first recommendation on this will be to have a set time that you go to bed or start your nighttime routine. For, my, for me, on weeknights, it's 9.30. Now, I know that, you know, people may associate this with children having a bedtime and all of that, but, I mean, obviously that exists because parents understand that kids need to sleep a certain amount of time. So, of course, applying this to yourself is going to have that same kind of effect. And this time that you choose for yourself, whatever it is, again, you have to calculate, you know, seven to eight hours, depending on when you wake up in the morning. This time really can't be negotiated, meaning you shouldn't just try to get to bed at this time or make an effort to do it. You have to actually strictly adhere to this. And the reason that I'm really harping on this fact of strict adherence is that staying up late is one of the easiest things in the world to do, right? When people are not sleeping enough, it's never because they're so highly disciplined that they get up too early in the morning, right? It's always 100% of the time, or let me say 99.99% of the time, because of the fact that they don't go to bed early enough. And so that is going to be what you really need to uh, address in order to take this problem head on and tackle it for yourself. So that's step one, to be strict about the time you go to bed or the time that you start your nighttime routine. So for me, I said 9.30 is when I start my nighttime routine. Step two is going to be to get away from screens in the time leading up to the time at which you actually go to bed. Looking at screens is bad for your eyes and also makes it more difficult to fall asleep if you're someone who goes to uh, bed immediately after looking at screens because of the fact that, you know, your eyes are used to seeing all of this bright light and now suddenly it's dark and you're, you know, you're not giving yourself a natural time to adjust and so on. It just makes falling asleep more challenging just based on the physiology of your eyes, vision, and all of that. I don't really know the science of it behind, you know, as far as anything more specific than what I just said. But there's plenty of people who do know that, and because of the fact that this is more and more common nowadays and people are understanding that this is a problem, I'm sure there are plenty of videos that are out there telling you why uh, looking at screens a lot is bad for your eyes and makes it more difficult to fall asleep. And if you've ever looked at uh, tips on how to fall asleep faster, because again, many videos are out there, many blogs and all of that are on there, one of the things that they always mention is to get away from screens, you know, maybe an hour or some number of hours before uh, the time you go to bed. They'll also talk about uh, dimming lights, you know, in the lead up to when you go to bed and things like that to just get your eyes more used to darkness and so on. And just in terms of your own life experiences, you probably have noticed that this is the case as well, that it makes it more difficult. So I don't think that I'm really telling you anything that you don't know already, at least on some level. But when it comes to building positive habits in life, knowledge is just the first piece to fall into place. You then need a strategy on how to go about putting that knowledge into practice so that it actually benefits you. 
uh, so that you actually execute that by incorporating those habits into your lifestyle. Now, if you've seen my diet related videos, you'll know that I'm a big believer in not trying to count on discipline and willpower in order to make changes in your life, but instead counting on gradually adding things into your normal lifestyle as part of a routine. But the reason that I'm specifically saying here that for the cause of sleep, you do need to be disciplined about your sleep timing uh, is basically because of two reasons. One, if you're living a modern sedentary kind of a lifestyle, you're not going to be tired enough to want to go to bed when you know that you should. I mean, I personally could stay up maybe three more hours a day every single day than I do now because it's not like, you know, it's not like the old days when people had all this hard manual labor to do for hours and hours a day as their job. And, you know, after they got home and washed up and ate, they were just so tired that they just wanted to rest as much as they could. For me, and I assume for a lot of you, our jobs are basically just sitting at a desk, uh, pushing keys on a computer, doing different things in some system or some number of systems. And it can get mentally tiring, of course, but not physically tiring. So the natural ability to continue to stay awake when you're not physically tired is one of the reasons why uh, it's so important to really use your own self-discipline and willpower here to purposely uh, stick to this uh, bedtime, so to speak. And the second reason is that we have a lot of enticing distractions nowadays uh, that are trying to keep us away from our goal of getting enough sleep in the modern day. We have electricity so we can just turn on lights and keep them on for as long as we could possibly want. Uh, and two, we also have internet, streaming services, TV, games, uh, social media, all of these kinds of things that are entertaining, they're mentally stimulating things. They want to try to trick us into believing that they are more important than getting enough sleep, right? So basically to recap, three things. Uh, being strict about your sleep time, that's your first uh, step that I want you guys to take on. This is the first step that I did. Staying away from screens uh, for some time period before you go in the lead up to when you're going to uh, plan to go to sleep. And then counting on discipline are the three tips that I've laid out that I would recommend to all of you. And then there's also one more thing that I didn't mention, which... Uh, I personally do. I'm not necessarily recommending it to everyone, but I do some uh, physical exercise at night. I do. I used to do calisthenics exercises that were somewhat strenuous. Now I do yoga uh, asanas more, but trying to get a little bit physically tired before you go to bed, I think is a good idea because again, you know, if you think about exercise, for example, to just shift gears a little bit, People in the past, I mean, the overwhelming majority of people in the past, unless you're like an Olympic athlete or something, you weren't doing any kind of exercise because the normal labor and lifestyle that you lived was so physically taxing upon you that that gave you the uh, the right amount of quote unquote exercise, the right amount of physical activity that you needed in order to be healthy and also tire yourself out. So Trying to kind of replicate that by doing some exercise at night, I think, would be uh, positive. Obviously, you don't want to overdo it because, I mean, I personally think exercise is better done in the morning. That's when I do uh, the exercise, most of the actual strenuous exercise that I do. Um, but it's definitely something to think about. And again, even though I said that discipline and willpower are necessary on this particular topic. I'm not saying that because of the fact that uh, trying to make things easy on yourself is not the right way. I'm saying it because, like I described, sleep in general is something that uh, it's so much easier to just continue to stay awake and we have all these uh, distractions and so on that are so interesting to us. But any way that you can make it easier on yourself that, like, for example, feeling more tired physically when you go to bed, uh, those are all good things. And obviously, things like uh, getting away from screens and also dimming lights in the lead up to going to bed, those are things that make it 
literally easier to fall asleep because of the fact that, you know, your vision and how it's used to light and so on. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Jay Sriram.